This is section 5.2. We're going to use perpendicular bisectors. A segment bisector intersects a segment at its midpoint. A segment, ray, line, or plane that is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint is called a perpendicular bisector. So this line right here, it could appear as a line or part of a line, like a segment or a ray. This line is a perpendicular bisector because it crosses this segment at a right angle and it touches the segment at its midpoint. And you know it's a midpoint because of those marks. So if something is a perpendicular bisector, you need that right angle and you need the fact that this point is a midpoint. You would need these congruent marks. A point is equidistant from two figures if the point is the same distance from each figure. Points on the perpendicular bisector of a segment are equidistant from the segment's endpoints. So here's what that means. You can pick any point you want from this perpendicular bisector, and it would be the same distance to that endpoint, and it would be from that endpoint. So this point C, for example, A to C would be the same distance as C to B. So there is a perpendicular bisector theorem. This is theorem 5.2 in your theorem packet. In a plane, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. And that's what we just said here. So if segment CP is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB, notice how we angle and we go P is the midpoint because those marks are the same, then we know the distance from C to A is the same as the distance from C to B. Now, before we move on, notice what is formed here. You have a line or part of a line crossing a segment and then you're talking about these lengths. Do you see how it makes two triangles? And if these are both the same, wouldn't that make this an isosceles triangle? So we know a lot of things about isosceles triangles because we know these two parts are congruent. So that's how we would prove this theorem. Now there's a converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem also. It's Theorem 5.3. It tells you, let's say you have a perpendicular bisector. And let's say you have this point D that's just kind of floating out there. And you're not sure if it's on this perpendicular bisector or not. You can determine if it is. If the distance from D to A is the same as the distance from D to B, then this point D must live on this line, even though it's not shown to live there. And Obviously, if these aren't the same, then this point D is not on the perpendicular bisector. And again, it goes back to the fact that you have an isosceles triangle here. Here's an example. Let's use the perpendicular bisector theorem. Segment BD, or line BD, is the perpendicular bisector of segment AC. So let's mark that. If it's a perpendicular bisector, we have a right angle and we have congruent segments there. Find the distance from A to D. Well, if this is the perpendicular bisector, then what do you know about the distance from C to D compared with the distance from A to D? They're the same. 5x and 3x plus 14 are equal. So subtract 3x from both sides. 2x will be 14, so 1x is 7. Now, they want the distance from A to D, so make sure you answer that question. A to D is 5 times x, so it's 35. Let's use perpendicular bisectors. In this diagram, line WX, that's this one, is the perpendicular bisector of segment YZ. So we know that's a right angle. We know these are congruent. What segment lengths in the diagram are equal? Well, these ones are marked equal. So we'll say segment Y, oh, dang it, I put Y, Z. That's not gonna go. How about segment Y, V? That's congruent to segment Z, V. Also, Segment YX is congruent to segment 
zx. Also, notice how this point W is on the perpendicular bisector. That means W is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So YW is congruent to segment ZW as well. Here's a question for you. Is point V on the perpendicular bisector line WX? Well, we can't really tell if this goes through V or not, but the converse of the theorem tells you if these distances are the same, if V is equidistant from Y and Z, then this line is going to go right through that point. So the answer is yes, because those are the same. So I'll put that there. Segment YV is congruent to segment ZV.